Hi, I'm really excited that you joined us today in our presentation. It's my special honor to uh, give this topic. My name is Chris Carr, and our topic today is going to be what are the main effects of long-term endurance training on our circulatory system and our respiratory system? Well, our heart and breathing work together, and there are two vital components to ensure that we're going to live uh, a decent life, a quality life. So when we start training and riding a bicycle uh, for a pretty long duration, say about 30 miles or 40 miles, or for running, um, if we're running for longer than 5 miles, or doing any kind of cardiovascular activity, swimming for 40 minutes or above, what are the effects of our breathing? Well, we have a very big increase in our blood circulation in our lungs. And that basically causes our normal breathing patterns to increase once we exercise. Once you're running for a while, as your circulatory system is working, you're inhaling oxygen and it's bringing it to the muscle cells and it's taking the carbon dioxide and it's, it's exhaling it. Uh, you have a lot of blood buildup in your upper chest, upper heart chambers, the atriums and ventricles, and right around here, your superior, inferior, vena cava, almost real close to your lungs, basically, basically your lungs. And due to that, we have an increased tidal volume, an increased respiratory rate, the ability of us to breathe, where we breathe uh, a lot more times in one minute, and we have an increased pulmonary diffusion, our ability to break down carbon dioxide at a faster rate. So with these factors, that increases our pulmonary ventilation. And that is our ability to inhale and exhale as much liters per minute of oxygen and carbon dioxide as we possibly can. Through repeatedly exercising, we're able to increase our intensity, uh, varying our, our workout plans. You have a, a philosophy of how you're going to train. Some days you're going to run a lot of miles, maybe uh, 15 miles. Some other days maybe just sprints, sprint interval training. Some other days maybe running five miles to ten miles at your recreational leisure with no specific time oriented. So depending upon our philosophy, that will be the effect long term of on our breathing. Now as far as your heart is concerned, uh, my heart, so you're running, you're swimming, you're bicycling, high intensity, and our heart, our cardiac muscle fibers, we have four chambers of the heart. And these cardiac muscle fibers, they enlarge. And as they enlarge, our, our heart is going, to, is going to gain mass. It's going to gain mass. It's going to gain weight. And as it gains weight, it's going to increase the force that it pumps out the blood. Especially in your left ventricle right here, where it goes into your aortic semilunar valve, from there to your aorta, from there to all your muscle fibers. We call that the mean arterial pressure, your real average blood pressure, also known as your ejection fraction. Okay? You may want to know these terms if you ever happen to visit your cardiologist or you're helping a loved one and they start saying some big words and it sounds confusing. Watch this video because it, it can help you and it's really not confusing. It's fairly simple. Please also refer to how uh, the blood and the oxygen work together in the cardiac cycle in our other video, cardiac cycle video. But, uh, so where were we? Basically our heart is going to beat harder. It's because it's enlarged and the cardiac fibers are enlarged, the mass increase, it's going to pump harder, it's going to pump more forceful. And it takes less time to pump more forceful. Instead of a slow pump, it's a boom! And as it's a boom, it takes longer to, to um, in the diastolic phase where the heart is relaxing in the atriums, in the left and right atriums, the, the heart will take longer to build up the blood. And then from there, the volume where it expands will take even longer. And that's how our heart rates will lower as we increase our training long term, long-term uh, long endurance training our heart rates will decrease. Um, usually my resting heart rate when I'm walking around is about on the high 40s. And I've, I've clocked it at the high to mid 30s when I first wake up. 
Some people say to take your heart rate when you first wake up, and you can do this by um, just wrapping your fingers around here and using your index finger and your middle finger, okay, and you find it right here on your carotid artery, in your wrist, I'm sorry, your wrist, or you can go on the carotid artery. You can find it a lot of places, but these are some of the easy places to find it on the body. Try not to use your thumb because a lot of times some people you can feel their, their uh, heart rate right in their thumb, so you don't want to confuse that. But you can take uh, 15 seconds and you can count how many beats it is. If it's 15 beats, then you multiply it times 4, and that would give you the equivalent in 60 seconds, which is what we denote in one minute. So 15 times 4 would be 60 beats per minute. Um, for right now, usually the average heart rate is about 72 beats per minute, but we do have a mildly high population in the U.S. with obesity and overweight, so the heart rates are increasing at around an average of maybe 80 to 90 beats per minute. In any event, I want to thank you very much. And it is, it is very important to train long-term endurance sometime in your life to really feel not only the gains that you can make in your breathing and your heart, but just how you feel. You get that real natural high. I know I do when I'm out there and just running and running. And uh, you, want to, you want to try to take preventative measures so you don't hurt your joints because Throughout a lot of repetitive motion, whether it be in our shoulders when we're swimming each stroke, whether it be in our knees when we're pedaling on the bicycle and how we fix our stabilization muscles with our uprightness in spine and neck, or in running where it's really easy to get shin splints or hurt your ankles or get uh, hamstring strains or things on the knees, uh, we want to take precaution. So take precaution, be easy on yourself, and remember, have fun and exercise. Yeah!